Look at all this water coming out of there. everyone and welcome back to the channel. It is that time of year to start thinking about RV maintenance and one of the biggest places that maintenance tends to get neglected is the roof. So in this video we're going to take you through some processes on how to clean your roof, check your roof, and reseal any areas that need to be resealed. Okay so the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to clean the roof. What we don't want to do is put down sealant over the top of dirt. So what I'm using is Tide detergent and what this does is it has a degreaser in it and so it will get any of the oils and stuff off of the top of the roof. Then the next thing that we're going to want to do is we are going to inspect the roof. So we want to make sure we, you know, seal any holes on the roof and just make sure that we haven't uh, snagged anything on the roof, you know, over time, which has happened to me on um, multiple occasions. Sometimes you'll run across a branch, it'll slide across the roof and, and you'll just need to go ahead and just uh, fix that before you reseal. So now that I messed up by putting this flex seal on, causing water to pool inside and make it worse, what I'm going to need to do is take this hair dryer. You can get a heat gun at Home Depot, whatever you want, but I'm gonna just go on the cheap and use my wife's hair dryer. And we're gonna go ahead and heat up the flex seal and remove the tape. As you can see, if you don't properly install the Eternabond or Flex Seal tape for the temporary fix, then you have a worse issue on your hands. So as in my case, I did not seal the edges of the tape very well. So water got up inside, started pooling, and now we have a worse issue. Taking a hair dryer, putting some heat on, to remove that tape is beneficial because if you don't use a hair dryer and you just try to pull that stuff up, it's so difficult to get off. And what you can have happen is if you pull too hard, it will lift the EPDM roof material from the membrane of the RV roof. Charity brought me a coffee, so I am ready to continue on. Now that we have the flex seal off of there. I'm ready to go ahead and peel up all the old lap sealant that I put on a couple years back. What I'm going to use are these plastic putty knives. You don't want to use metal because it could cut into the membrane of the roof. So I will use these and uh, go ahead and start peeling off the old stuff so we can clean it up and put on the new lap sealant. Thank you. 
here. I have a sneaking suspicion where the leak probably was. As you can see, these dark spots right here, you know there's been water getting in there because there's dirt and a mark here showing that it's been wet. Also, there's some screws right here that are rusted. So that obviously tells you water has been getting in through there. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure we clean this up and get it uh, nice and sealed up. So after seeing the rusted screw and the water that seeped around the whole skylight, I'm tempted on pulling the whole skylight up just to make sure the wood and everything underneath is in good shape and I don't have to replace any of the wood. Also, I want to make sure it's clean underneath so I can uh, silicone around the edges, uh, make sure there's a good seal. So. Um, in the future, if stuff does get past the lap sealant, it doesn't go into the RV. So I want to go ahead and seal underneath and on the top, just so we have a little bit of, you know, double protection. As you can see, this screw here was actually partially uh, recessed, so it was not holding anything in place there or there. So this one actually wasn't holding anything at all. It's actually cut off, so it's just a partial screw. So it was so rusty. So I'm really glad that I pulled this up because I need to go ahead and clean up all of this. And there's a lower one here also. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this down. That way I can get everything all cleaned up. Now what we're gonna do is go on the inside of the RV and pull this one down. So we can go ahead and just get access to everything underneath and just make sure everything's clean. Okay. Let's go ahead and pull this thing down. As you can see here, this is where the damage is. And you can see there's water running down the side of the shower and pooling up in there. So that is the major issue that we're having here. And that one's not holding anymore. That one's not holding. That's not a good sign. That one's good. Most of the issue is on that side where the water was. Go ahead and pull this thing down. There we go. Exposing the roof. Boy, I really hope that it doesn't rain. We are in Florida and I checked the forecast and it doesn't look like we have anything this afternoon, so. We will see. All right, as you can see, um, it doesn't look too bad. There is a little bit of mold there, so I'm going to scrape all of that off. Look at all this water coming out of there. So it's been pooling up in there for quite a while. And going back into here. So I'm going to try to get this completely dried up. The nice part about having this open in here is I needed uh, some tools. I needed my putty knife to go ahead and get this dried out. So all I need to do is just stick my head up here and I can now grab my putty knife. I'm going to scrape the water out just to get it as dry as I can. Okay, so let's go ahead and scrape this and see how much water we can get out of here. Oh, that's nasty. You can hear it. Wow, 
well, I'm glad I did this sooner than later and that I caught this issue early on because it would have been going behind this wall. Right now, it's pretty solid, so there's nothing, you know, there's no issue on the wall itself. So just getting this all cleared up now will save, save the wall and save any issues in the future. Since this is a little bit worse than I thought it was going to be, um, I went and grabbed a fan. What I'm going to do is just go ahead and put the fan up there just to give it some time to dry in there because uh, it, it looks like it's been soaking for quite some time. Get this nice and clean. Okay, so I went to Home Depot and I got a few more screws. These particular ones are slightly bigger around in diameter and slightly longer because I wanna make sure these dig into the wood. You definitely want a bigger screw to make sure it grabs the wood. So let's go ahead and get it cleaned up and uh, get this tidied up before it starts raining. So to clean everything off, I got some odorless mineral spirits. And this works great for just cleaning off the edge of this guy. So that way, when we do put down the lap sealant, it adheres to the plastic. So that is one thing you're gonna wanna get. You're gonna wanna get some gloves to put on. And so now it's time to reseal. So basically the general rule of thumb, if you see any cracks, then it's time to take that uh, silicone up or the lap sealant, peel it up, and then reseal it. So another method is to do the finger test. So basically what you want to do is push on it with your finger. It should be kind of soft and pliable and not really hard. And if it's really hard and, and you see visually that there's some cracks in it, you definitely want to peel that up and, and just reseal it. So it's just a good measure to completely just get that resealed. What we need to do is take some clear silicone and we're just going to go right along the inside of this guy. I'm just gonna put a little bit extra on here and then I can go ahead and just clean up anything that bleeds through. And we'll run a little bit along this, the edge here, right in the middle. Just one right along where the nail holes are. <sighs> okay, so now it's time to put this on. I've got a leaf here. Got it clean, got the silicone around it. And then afterwards, we're gonna put the lap sealant on the outside. So let's go ahead and get things buttoned up. Okay, so now that I have the screws, what I'm going to do is just hand tighten them in first. So I'll just go ahead and screw all of them in, get them lined up with the hole, and then screw them in. I won't use a drill because I don't want to strip out any of that wood. I did get the bigger screws here, so they will, they should adhere to the wood without an issue. Beautiful. So today, what I'm going to do is put a little bit bigger screws in because the ones I had didn't adhere into the wood. 
So I've got a little bit bigger ones. We will be uh, putting some lap sealant around the skylight and going on the inside and making sure everything looks sealed from the inside and everything's completely dry and putting the bottom piece of the skylight back in. So let's go ahead and get started. But first, coffee. Now that we have all the screws securely fastening the sunroof down onto the RV roof, what we're going to do is put this self-leveling lap sealant down on top of the screws, then around the sunroof. Typically, I'll use the Dicor rubber roof cleaner, which is great for these EPDM roofs for RVs, but I didn't have any, so I basically used Tide, which works great, but what it can do is dry out these EPDM roofs. So what I'm going to do now is put on this rubber roof treatment and it has UV protection. So what it, what it will do now that the roof is white and it will dissipate any sunlight, this will also add as a second layer to, um, to repel or to block any UV rays from hitting that roof, which will cool the RV in the summertime and allow it to last a little bit longer. So we're gonna go ahead and put it into this spray bottle. We're gonna spray it onto the roof. Then I've got this big long handled brush. We're gonna go ahead and brush it on to the RV roof. Go ahead and do two lines across the back here in a section. Then we're gonna take this big brush and just rub it right on. So now that we have the skylight all ready to go, we are going to go over the side of the RV with this non-leveling, non-sag sealant. And this is the lap sealant by Dicor. That's basically all I use. And what I'm going to do before I clean the side seams is just clean it off with mineral spirits. So this will adhere and stick to that without peeling up and uh, I did find a couple problem areas along the side as you can see right here there's a few areas that have been letting in water so what we're gonna do is go ahead and seal off that side and also underneath the slide toppers There you go. We are done and ready for another fun season of RVing. So I went ahead and put all the lap sealant on and I laid it on nice and thick and let it self level. Did a nice little uh, hose test and we have no leaks.
Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that it was helpful for you and helps you out when it comes to resealing your RV roof. If you wanna see more videos with tips or tricks, go ahead and click right over here. Or if you wanna see some of our travel vlogs and places that we've been to, go ahead and check out right over here. Thanks for watching and if we don't see you on the road, we'll see you in the next video.